Well, welcome back. But if you haven't been following along with the skiff build, I hope you'll go back and check them out. So this is gonna be, I think, part 16. And I'm trying to break it up in kind of sections as to what my real main big goals were. So the front deck was really, I was putting it off till the very last minute because I really didn't know if I was gonna have time to get it done or not. And if I had to, I was just gonna roll without it. So that's kind of where we are. So I'm trying to really get this thing done. And, I, but I really want the deck to be nice because the I've went through, I think this is like the third deck that I've put on the boat since we've had it. And they've always just rotted and fallen apart because they've always just used treated plywood and never really epoxied it in because I, I, didn't, I never knew anything about epoxy until I started this build. So that's my main goal. So that's what this video is gonna be. I hope you like it. And I hope maybe somebody finds something helpful. Maybe somebody wants to do this on their own skip. But I had big plans to start with and I had to downscale. I couldn't do my hatches in the back of the deck because I just didn't have time. I just was running completely out of time. So I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe if you haven't, leave a thumbs up and let's get started. Well, in my mind, what I've got is this is gonna be the back of it. And I went ahead and ground all the gel coat off where I'm gonna put my beams. And this is gonna be a bulkhead. This is gonna be the back. And then I'm gonna have 16 inch hatch lids, three of them. I believe I'm gonna do three. But then I need another beam right in here. But I've got to, I've just got this two by four here. So to help me get my measurements to get everything nice and or I've got a flat surface because everything's curved, everything's bowed. And I remember the last time I did this, it was a pain in the butt to get the right cuts to match up. So we're gonna try, hopefully we can get this right. And I've been going back and forth on if I want to keep the uh, deck flush with the sides, but I think I'm gonna keep it on top and just do a nice curvature down into the top of the deck. Because if I put it down in here, I'm gonna have to tab in between my uh, trusses or whatever you wanna call them. I'm gonna have to tab in between right here on the edges or there'll be nothing supporting it, just fiberglass. So I think I'm gonna run it on top. It's not gonna look quite as good, but I think it'll be all right. Well, I've got my marine grade plywood out here and this is that same Akumi that this is a piece left off the transom. And what I'm gonna do is I've got it marked out already. I'm gonna use, this is gonna be my bulkhead piece for the front or the, I guess the back of the track or the back of the deck. So I'm gonna take, I think I'm gonna make them four inches and make my joist four inches going across. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of these cut out. Well, I've got two done. And what I'm doing is I've got a two by four and I'm laying it up right on my mark on the furthest side of my mark, the longest side. And I'm just taking my paint sticks and tacking them on with the nail gun, small little nails. And that gets me my base angle. And then I'm taking two pieces, screwing them together, going ahead and getting them screwed together. So that way I've already got them pre-started for whenever I go ahead and laminate them together. And then I'm taking my sander and sanding in my angle because it's kind of curved and bumped and just got to play with it to get it, to get them to fit tight. And I want them to fit pretty nice and snug in here because I'm going to screw these to the bottom of the deck. And I'm not going to tab these in or anything. All I'm going to do is put a bunch of thickened epoxy on there and let them ride. So that's all I'm doing. And now I'm just going to mark out my angles and cut these. <laughs> well, use what you got. Well, I got all my floor pulley trusses here and for my deck. And now I'm going to go ahead and laminate all these together. And I left the screws in just a little ways that way I can just fold them right back together sandwich them together and use the screws to clamp them they got my epoxy all mixed up and I'm gonna add I like to add some milled glass in there I don't measure it I just put uh, probably a quarter of a cup or so for four ounces when well, no, six this is six ounces so I think that just adds a little bit of strength I don't know if it actually does or if it's even needed, but it makes me feel better. Whenever I'm laminating boards and stuff together, that's what I like to do. And now I'm just going to put some 
have a seal in there. Probably. It's probably going to start with about a cup, but it's probably going to take two to get a good thick consistency. Consistency that's not going to run everywhere. Well, I'm skipping around a little bit here in the video because somehow I don't know if I forgot to hit record or if I just lost the footage, but I completely lost the footage of putting the joists on the bottom of the deck, glassing those in, and I ran a layer of glass 16 ounce biaxle on the entire underside of the deck, mainly for waterproof and to tab in and strengthen the joists into the deck. So unfortunately I lost that, but we're gonna go ahead and skip through and this is where I've got it glassed on the underside and I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down to the deck and then tab it in all the way around and cover the outside of the deck with 17 ounce by axle. Well, I got the deck all put together and I went ahead and glassed the underside. And now I've got a bunch of thickened epoxy and I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing stuck to the deck. And one thing I like to do when I'm doing my thickened epoxy, I try to make a hole in the middle keep it all spread out hopefully it won't heat up as quick so i'm gonna slap this stuff on here real quick try to get this thing done clamps just were not deep enough to take the void so I scrambled around as fast as I could and tried to figure out a way to clamp this thing on and the only thing I could figure out was to screw these boards on or the overhang and it worked out pretty good I think we got it every, all everywhere that had a high spot we got it seated down but these clamps right here will fly off and nail you I had one on the front that flew off right by my face and scared the crap out of me whenever I was finishing all the gel coat, not the gel coat, changing back and forth too much. All the epoxy making my edge <laughs> thing had jumped. Oh God. But later tonight, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing glassed and fared, and then we'll be able to sand it down and move on with life. Oh man, well, it's about one o'clock in the morning and I finally got this thing all glassed in. And I was trying to rush through. I really wanted to get this done tonight because it's, uh, what's today? Tuesday. And tomorrow, I uh, really want to get this thing fared. I used the slow, the slow epoxy again so I can fare it in the morning. And luckily I've got this week off mostly, but we got to work Thursday and Friday. So I'm trying to get this thing fared and ready to go for this weekend. So... I can go ahead. I'm supposed to get my trolling motor this week, which I am extremely excited about because I splurged a little bit and it's something that I don't, I don't normally spend this much money on something and I am excited about it to say the least. So, but I have no idea if it's how the front's going to work. I'm probably going to have to come back. I'm not going to paint it yet because, or gel coat it because I know I'm going to probably have to come back and fill this gap in right here and I really wish I really thought about setting it down where it's even with the lip but it's so uneven going up through there it would have took so much time just to fare it out get it even and nice and pretty and I just it would have been not as strong so I just this is what it is this is the way it's going to be it looks pretty decent once I get it all sanded up fared it ought to look pretty good and I left the back corner here squared because originally it was going to come to here and right here was going to be three hatches and i've come to the conclusion i don't have time for that i ain't got time to build all that so i'm going to build just a little face plate right here with holes in it like you normally see on these skiffs so i can stow my anchor and stuff up there to get me through but uh, i wanted to square it off because i want my hatches to butt up real close and previously like on these i have rounded all and tapered all my edges and it leaves such a big gap so i'm gonna try to do it square this time and hope that turns out good 
Well, I thought I had this front deck all done, but my trolling motor, I got my plate for it. It's going to stick out too far because the lip was, you can see back in here. And I needed to put a little filler piece in here so I could have it a little more securely mounted. So now this is my last piece and we'll call it done. We're gonna just go ahead and get this thing glassed in. The worst part is I've already washed this entire thing down once with Dawn. Now I gotta do it again. But we're getting there. Well, we're getting down the, the nitty gritty now. This is really the last part that has to be, besides the hatch covers I gotta touch up, this is the last thing to paint for gel coat. And I tell you, I'm glad. I am about at my wits end with this gel coat. But we're getting there. Hopefully soon, we'll have this thing ready to go. I've been working on the wiring. This was my last real big hurdle, so. I'm ready to get it out of the way. I'm just doing the same thing I've been doing. I'm mixing up, this time I mixed up six. Six ounces of gel coat with 7.5 cc's of uh, MEKP. And this time I did something just a little different, which is terrifying because every time I do that, it messes me up, but it shouldn't. Because I put just a little bit of styrene in there which I did with the Duratec and everything worked out really good. And it's just kind of, the gel coat was kind of thick. So this should hopefully just kind of help it fill in some of those pinholes. And it's just blowing out really nice. So uh, that seems to help a lot. I don't know why in the world I did not do that or even think about doing that when I was rolling out the sides in the floor but i tell you what it makes it roll out a lot nicer just for six ounces i put about a cap full of styrene and you can tell a big difference all right well i'm gonna try to hurry before this starts to kick on me because it's pretty warm and i'm gonna do one coat and then i will do and obviously i forgot to stink and tape my roller but I'm gonna do one coat and then I'm gonna do another coat. This is all no wax with my non-skid for up here. Well, I think my little transition here for my troll motor mount turned out pretty good. The only thing that bugs me is I tried to leave it without any non-skid. Whenever you're rolling, even though you vacuum it off, it still comes on your roller. And I accidentally made a swipe right there, but It'll be all right. The only thing that really bugs me is the roller it just started falling to pieces. And I'm out of the uh, red hair ones and they jacked the price up on them. So I guess that's what I get. But it still cooled off way faster than I was hoping. So it's still, I don't know, that's pretty much, this is maybe a touch tacky. But hopefully everything will turn out all right. Well, that's it for this one. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter because I'm trying to get the view duration up a little bit and just kind of maybe help, help the channel out a little bit, make it a little bit better, keep everybody interested for a little bit longer. So I hope, hope that worked. But that's pretty much it for this one. So we got the deck on and, and I got it built out for the trolling motor base to mount. So I'm not sure which direction I'm going to do the next video. I've got, I think I'm going to break out and do the trolling motor all in one because that's like the most exciting part for me of the whole build because I invested quite a bit of money in one and I've always, always wanted one and just, I never could, I never could just bring myself to do it, but I did this time because I want this fish, I want this to be a hardcore fishing boat where I can go 
be comfortable, use it, and do any and everything that I want to. And there's a lot of things that I want to do as far as like slow trolling for catfish or, you know, anything like that, crappy, whatever, and use it at the beach for the spot lock. And, you know, that, that's going to help me out a lot. So I'm going to kind of, I might break that out into its own video, but I think I'm either going to do that one or I'm going to do rigging next, kind of the final rigging and getting all the steering cables and all that in and wiring. So I haven't decided yet. We'll see. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll stick around and keep watching these. And if you haven't seen all the other ones, please go back and watch those. And please subscribe, leave a thumbs up. Appreciate you watching. And we'll see you next time.